tutorials on YouTube. Today we're going to be talking about making squares without open ends. So we all know square tubing as a whole, right? Or a square that's open. Usually on a lot of projects you'll just cap it with a plastic cap. It's cheap, it's easy, it's what you usually do on fencing. But there are times when people and orders are going to want a full metal all the way around, no holes, square. What do you do when you don't want to miter the corners at a 45 degree angle? I don't like to do that. We don't have the jig set up for that, so it takes a lot of time and it's inaccurate. I don't like to have to fill the gaps all the way around and then grind it all down. For a clean way that I like to do is you just cap the ends with a piece of square steel. So basically you're capping the ends like plastic, except it's steel, so it'll look pretty seamless. This will be ground down, but it's a much smoother and easier grind down than if we would do a mitered 45 corner edge to edge. These are a little thicker, so it actually would be easier to miter a corner and weld it all the way around, full wrap around weld, but usually you're working with thin steel. So thin gauge, thin wall tubing when you're trying to do something like that. And it's too easy to bust a hole in it because of overheating. And if you do a weld that's too cold, then you're not getting very good penetration. Hold on, is that a spider on your shoulder? No, it's just a thumbs up button. Go ahead and smash that. Help the YouTube algorithm. I really appreciate it. Make my day and hit the subscribe button below. Thank you. We're gonna start with the fireball tool, of course, because who doesn't want to use the fireball tool? We're gonna start by having this piece of one inch square tubing that I cut, and we're gonna place this on here. So the overall OD on this, which means from outer dimension to outer dimension, needs to be seven inches. Since each one of these is an inch, I cut this piece as five inches. If you were mitering the corners, you would do all full length. So you would go seven inches, cut it 45, and then I think this was a foot and six inches, and you'd also cut it 45. So that's an important difference to make. Uh, whether you're gonna decide to miter the corners out of 45 is gonna change the cut length compared to if you're going to just butt up the straight cuts against each other like I'm doing right here. So just keep that in mind, make the decision before you make your cuts whether you're gonna do this type of all round metal shapes or mitered 45 corners. Before I butt this up against the face of this, I check and make sure there's no burrs on the bottom that's gonna get in the way of it sitting flat on top of this piece because when you use band saws, there's usually a little bit of remnant left on the edge of the piece. This one doesn't. This is the wrong clamp. I usually get clamps pre-set up. Speed tip for all you fabricators out there. Get your C-clamps preset for what you're doing. So if I'm doing a project where I'm mass producing something or even doing a handful of things, it's worth it to get enough C-clamps around you, quick release C-clamps, and set the tension on it for certain things. So this is my clamp that I'm gonna hold the fireball tool to the table when I hold it upright that you'll see in a minute to cap the ends. Whereas these, these C-clamps, their tension is set to clamp the fireball tool to the one inch square. So I don't have to constantly be changing and finagling with the adjustment on this thing. They're just preset. Every now and then you have to retension them because they loosen up, but it helps you fabricate something quicker.